welcome to a brand new season of the game show Canada. I'm Mark Power, and I think I say on behalf of all of us, good riddance 2020, hello 2021, hopefully the light at the end of the tunnel is in sight here as we continue to deal with this pandemic. And I should say, hence is the reason why my hair and my face are a mess right now. All the barbershops around here are closed down because of the latest restrictions. Hopefully that will be over with soon, especially with the vaccine on its way. And I uh, hope all of you are staying safe and that you had a great holiday. And although we have a new intro here at the Games of Canada, not much has changed. I'm still here reviewing Canada's game shows of the past. And we're going to going to go right into it here and talk about this month's game show, which was one of the most popular game shows on Canadian television. And as far as I know, it has the distinction of being the only Canadian game show to have ever been rerun on GSN. So without further ado, I give you Ultra Stumpers. This is the personalized license plate of an eager guy. If you can figure out that it says, I go for it, then you're ready to play Bumper Stumpers. And now, the driving force on Bumper Stumpers, Al Dubois. Thank you very much, yes. Welcome to our very first Bumper Stumpers, one of many to be coming into your home over the next weeks and the many, many weeks to come. Bumper Stumpers is a show that turns a highway hobby into challenging fun for you and ready cash for our contestants. Bumper Stumpers was a popular word association game that debuted in 1987 and ran until near the end of 1990 for a total of three seasons. The show was created by game show legend Wink Martindale and produced as a joint venture between him, Global, in Canada, the USA Network in the United States, and in association with Jack Perry and Dan Enright Productions. It was taped in Toronto at the Global TV Studios. The host is weatherman, actor, and narrator Al Dubois, with Ken Ryan as an answer. Al does a nice job. He was a little bit stiff and robotic sometimes, but the fact that he keeps the game moving so quickly, he's friendly, and seems genuinely happy for the contestants when they win. So really his shortcomings are largely just nitpicky things. Two teams of two play. The game is based around solving vanity plates. The object of the game is to solve the super stumper. At the beginning of the game, Al will give a clue and the first of seven spaces in this puzzle for free. To earn more spaces and the right to solve the puzzle, the teams have to win a jump-in game. Al will show them two plates and read a clue. The first player to buzz in and identify whether the right plate or the left plate goes with the clue earns 10 seconds for their partner to try and solve said plate. If they're wrong, their opponents get a chance to solve. The correct solve earns the team one letter of their choice of one of the remaining spaces in the Super Stumper and five seconds to try and solve it. This process continues until one team solves the Super Stumper. The winning team earns $500 and goes to the bonus round. The losing team stays on until they've lost twice. If the Super Stumper goes unsolved, a new game is played, with the money carrying over. After a few weeks, this was changed, with each game being a 2 out of 3 game match, with a win getting $1,000 for the winning team, and the losing team going off to the land of parting gifts, as the late Bill Rafferty would say. Under this format, if a Super Stumper went unsolved, Sudden Death is played, with teams alternating taking turns revealing spaces of a new Super Stumper, going back and forth until one team finally solves it. Unfortunately, even though the show was only on the air for three seasons, it went through several different bonus games. The first one I'm going to call Format 1. The team is given 30 seconds to solve up to 7 plates. Each plate they solve adds a dollar value to the board for the second portion. In the second portion, it's basically your standard bearing in right game. Contestants choose one of the letters in the word Stumper and have to try to find $500 before finding the bad guy. In this case, the stop sign. If they find the stop sign, the game ends, but they get to keep whatever money they've picked up to that point. If they find $500 or more, then the money is doubled. 
So if two bonus games per match under this format, it was possible for a team to win as much as $4,600 per match, which was very generous for Canadian TV at the time. After a few weeks, around the time they switched to the two out of three game format, the bonus game was tweaked, so that now contestants had to find $1,000 or more to win, and hitting a stop sign would cost them everything, so they had the choice to either keep the money and quit, or risk it in order to play on. Also, the first correctly solved plate added a win card, so if they found the win, they would automatically be bumped up to $2,000. Under this format, it was possible in as much as $3,000 per match. So it was a cut to the budget, but it was still generous under Canadian TV standards at the time, so I guess no one really noticed. Sometime later, the bonus game format was changed again. This time the team would be given 30 seconds to solve 4 out of 5 plates. If they succeeded, they won $200 and then had a choice to either go double or nothing to try and solve one more plate in 10 seconds or less. If they succeeded, they'd win $400, and the right to try to go double or nothing again for $800. If they succeeded there, they had one more chance to go double or nothing for a potential $1,600. So now, the potential win per match had been reduced from $3,000 to $2,600. So now we're starting to see a significant cut from the initial 4600 per match. And also, this bonus game was particularly difficult, and very few people won the $1,600 over the run. But they didn't even stop there. In the final bonus game format, one contestant went off into isolation while their partner played the game. This time, the player would have 30 seconds to solve up to 5 plates. The solution to each plate serving as a clue to the identity of a person, place, or thing. As a result, Al didn't give the contestant any clues to the plates, unlike all the other bonus games. Everyone they solved earned $100, and then they had a choice. Either keep the money and quit, or risk it and try to go triple or nothing by having their partner figure out the identity that all the plates led to. If they're right, the money was tripled to a potential $1,500. If they're wrong, they lost the money. So once again, another cut to the budget, with the potential per match being down to $2,500. Not that it was a significant cut from the last bonus game, but really, you had to cut it again? <sighs> Despite all the budget cuts over the run, Bumper Stumpers was a pretty solid show and was one of the more popular things to come out of Canada. In fact, it was the cornerstone of USA Network's uh, game show block in the 80s, which included two other Canadian-produced shows, a revival of Jackpot and a revival of Chain Reaction. Wink Martindale was so proud of the format he even named two of his dogs, Bumper and Stumper, unfortunately both of whom have since passed on. And even former Bare Naked Ladies lead singer Stephen Page was a contestant on the show at one point, but he failed to win any money and admitted that it was because they were, he and his partner, his college friend Jeff, just weren't really prepared for the show. And after three years on the year, Bumper Stumpers went off the year in grand style by holding a tournament of champions, with the winners receiving a $10,000 prize, and the runners-up receiving a $5,000 prize. And that was a nice way to go out. Bumper Stumpers went off the air after three seasons in winter of 1990. And it was kind of a swan song for a lot of the production involved. For Wink Martindale, his next game show would be Trivial Pursuit, as well as the interactive family channel shows, all of which flopped. He then hosted Debt for Lifetime, which ran for two years, and that ended up being his last hosting gig until GSN's dreadful instant recall in and Jack Berry and Dan Enright Productions 
was slowly hitting its demise after the death of Jack Perry, with Dan Enright running the company and several shows just kind of flopping. Al Dubois would go on to have several more acting gigs, continue with meteorology, and narrated several documentaries. But he hasn't done anything for a few years, so it seems like he has quietly retired. And yes, according to the documentary on the search for Candace Game Shows, he's still alive. That's going to do it for this edition of the Game Show Canada. On behalf of all of us, I'm Mark Power, saying long may your big jib draw. Become a Patreon member at www.patreon.com slash gameshowcouple or check out our website www.gameshowcouple.com This has been an impressive production.